Good morning. Oh, we got some crazy hair. It is Wednesday. It's nine o'clock and I have been up way too long. I do not wake up this early. I thought I had a um, chamber of commerce. I know most of you have a chamber in your city you live in. Um, I'm on the board, but more recently I got appointed to be an officer for the board director. So I'm the vice chair of membership. So I'm so excited because we're doing our reports where we're going to talk about what our think, what our, um, our groups, which I'm membership, has been doing over the last quarter. So I get up, get dressed, put a little makeup on, um, and I will tell you, this lipstick, which I don't ever wear lipstick, it's a Rimmel. Uh, it goes on so silky. I literally think it's lip gloss every time I put it on. But it goes on, and I've drank this and had coffee. Now it does come off. It's not good. It's not like a no stain lipstick but you can't tell because I have not reapplied so anyways that's yeah this Rimmel and the color is oh so wicked it's number 820 anyways back to work so I get up and I'm like oh yeah I'm gonna get to this meeting even though I laid in bed thinking about all the ways I could cancel I me mean, one of my kids is sick someone's got pink eye like I really don't want to go to this seven o'clock meeting because I am tired and I have to drive to Manhattan Kansas which is about an hour and a half away this afternoon for more meetings so it was just a whole day full of meetings i get there at 6 55 all early and i'm like dang no one is here so i go through my emails and it said you know i uh, see you next wednesday for the officers meeting we always have it in the morning and i'm thinking okay something i'm missing so i go back a couple months ago i'm like 7 30 is the meeting time so i take my little happy butt down over to Mass Street, which is like a block away, and I go to Starbucks and get me some coffee. And I come back, it's like 7.07, .07. it took me three minutes in Starbucks. I sit in the car and start reading the news, because I read the news, I'm on CNN, News and Gut on Facebook, um, I read everything, Politico, Huffman Post, Any, anyway, so I'm reading the news, I'm like, dang, no one has pulled up yet, like, what is going on? Turns out the meeting, which I don't find out till I start Facebook. I am and people I'm like, hey, is anyone coming to the meeting today? Did I miss something? Because it says specifically, see you next Wednesday. Oh, well, in some thread of emails, which I don't think I'm on, or maybe I just didn't see it. Let's not blame other people. I possibly did not see it. They had changed the meeting till 3.30. So we canceled the officer's meeting, made it the board meeting, switch is this Wednesday, but it's in the afternoon. It says 7.30 in the morning. So it is nine o'clock. I've got a lot done. And right now I am working on, um, I have quite a few investment property listings right now. That's kind of what I wanted to talk to you guys about. I, I don't know if any of you guys are homeowners or looking to buy a home or just interested in the real estate market, but I wanted to talk about some multifamily units and the benefits of buying a multifamily um, and even occupying one side if possible. So right now I have duplexes for sale, and a duplex is when you can buy the two sides. In our market, a townhome is where you just buy one side, you just own your side. A duplex is where you can buy two, do meaning two. I've got one right now at $155,000 and it has two units. One side has a two bedroom, one side has a three bedroom. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of calculation because I should have done that before I start recording. Um, on one side of the unit, you have a mortgage. And you know, there's not, there's a lot of mortgage payment calculators. They're not all 100% accurate. A lot of times they'll just tell you what your PMI, I mean, what your principal and interest will be. It won't really factor in your taxes. So if you have that tax number, you can just take the yearly taxes, divide it by 12, and add it to the principal and interest. And then I try to estimate, um, you know, 155,000, I'm thinking probably like 90 dollars to a hundred dollars a month for insurance so that's kind of how i work with these numbers so um i'm going to put in a mortgage of 155,000, and i'm going to do a 30 year and i'm going to actually switch this around so that you can see what i'm working on and kind of see what i'm working on i just went to bank rate oh it's blurry i hope it we can get it a little bit more focused so i'm just going to bank rate and i'm going to put in that we're going to do a 30 year loan most people are doing 30-year loans. The interest rates are so low, there's really no reason to go any higher. So if I put in this purchase price of 155, a 30-year loan, 
interest rate of 4.5, it may be a little bit higher when you're doing an investment property. Um, but one of the good things about buying an investment property that you actually reside in is that you are able to um, do an FHA loan program, which has the lower amount down payment. And guys, I don't know why it's blurry. Let me try something different. Oh, that actually helped a little bit. So hopefully you guys can see. So I'm gonna go back up, and this is something that a realtor has access to. It's the MLS, the Multiple Listing Service. Here is that property I was referring to. We've got a duplex at 155. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it. I know I still wanted to get blurry again. At 155. And let's go down and see what these taxes are so I can factor that into our payment. And if you don't know that information, you don't know the taxes, most states have public records or you can call a local realtor not, um, and ask them if they can help you get that information. So we've got taxes of $2,002. So I'm gonna go back to my mortgage calculator. Oh, pop up, ad, goodness. And I'm gonna put annual taxes because I know that number, we don't have to guess, 2002. And like I said, a lot of times I'll just do 1,200. $100 a month for homeowner's insurance. Now, when you factor all of those in, you've got the monthly payment of, of principal and interest of $785.36. Now, a lot of people, this is where they get confused because they think, oh, well, the payment's only this, and then they call the realtor and they're like, or the mortgage lender, and they're like, no, your payments are higher than that because these calculators, a lot of different sites that offer these, like I said, I'm on bank rate, don't show you what print interest and taxes included. So once you add those in, things in, which is the 2002 and the 1200, um, you divide that by 12, that adds to your payment. So we're gonna have a monthly payment of $1,052.19. Now, this is not factoring in any type of down payment. This is just straight at 155. Now let's say you're gonna put 3% down. So let's say, Okay, I'm trying to do that math. 3% of 155, well, 3% of 150,000 would be 4,500. So let's say you're only going to do a mortgage for 150. Let's just take it down. The more, the less your mortgage payment is, the less your payments are. So that takes it to 1,026.86. And you know, we're not, we're not doing the purchase price. We're doing the actual loan amount. If you were going to be putting down 30% off of one. 55. I've got to do the math on a piece of paper, guys. Five, five. So that'd be forty-five thousand. So your loan, your mortgage would only be one hundred five. That takes your payment all the way down to seven ninety-eight eighty-five. Like that's huge. Now let's go back and look at this property. Let's say you have twenty percent down. We have. Let me go back and put that higher option too because I want to make sure. For people who can't just do the 20% down, we're looking at those numbers too. So we've got, look at my scratch paper, guys. Like this is how I doodle on my calendar. So I gotta go back and figure out what that number was. So we have, if you only were to put three about 3.5% three down, your payments would be 1,026.86. And if you were to put down the 20% down, your payments would be $798.85. So let's figure out how we can factor if this is a good property. Now I'm gonna go back to the actual listing and because I know this property, I have a little bit more information off the top of my head. This property's gross annual income is 19,200. So let's take and divide that up And I've got to pop up my calculator. I have horrible Wi-Fi down here in my office, so I apologize that things are a little delayed. Oops, and I, I'm gonna be clicky over here. So we have $19,200 in income. Divide it by 12. This property is bringing in $1,600 a month in rent. Now, Let's, let's think about this. Let's think about this. So you're bringing in $1,600 a month in rent. 
And even with 5% down, your payment is $1,026.86. So at that point, you are netting after the rent, the mortgage is paid about $574 a month, which you want to put some money away for potential vacancies. You want to put something away for repairs. I always say like 10% of that needs to be put away because you just don't know what's going to happen. Definitely encourage people to get home warranties. That really cuts back on your expenses if you do have repairs, but we'll do another video on home warranties later. So let's say you're like, okay, well, I have to live here. That's the original plan we talked about. And you're going to be doing something where you're living in one side and you're renting out the other side. Well, this property, let's just say it's $800 per side. It's a little bit different. One's $775, one's $825. But let's just say $800 a side. And you're able to put down that 20% down where your payment was $798.85. You're living for free because you're not paying anything because the other side is paying $800 a month. Plus, you got like a dollar fifteen to spare because their rent pays your mortgage with that twenty percent down. And even worst case scenario, if you I'm doing the math real quick, if you didn't, let's say you didn't, um, you rented it and you didn't have the twenty percent down. You're just doing like the three and a half the FHA, so you're going to be owner occupying and you're going to be relying on that rent. You you at that point are living for two hundred twenty six dollars and eighty six cents a month. Now. I can't live anywhere. People, people always try to call while I'm trying to record. Anyways, I can't live anywhere for two twenty six eighty six. Not only are you able to live at such a low expense, you've got income coming in paying the majority of your mortgage. And if you decide in like three to five years that you no longer want to live there, you can move out, make that property a cash flow at sixteen hundred a month. Like we said, you're getting five hundred seventy four a month in income which could be inflated because it, rental rates across the country are going up between three and four percent a year and if you were to rent the whole building and just continue to live where you live or like i said you make 574 this year and then every year it goes up or if you have the money to put down and you rent the one side and you're you're in the positive every month you're living for free and you're in the positive so Anyways, I just wanted to talk to you guys about rental properties and the, import, the importance of looking at investment properties when you're looking at something to buy. Um, FHA has a great program will, which will let you own or occupy and you can buy the full unit and get their low rates. Um, that's something you can definitely consider. Um, if you have cash, obviously buying a property in cash, you can see the return on your investment a lot quicker than a lot of people are seeing in stock markets right now. So there's just some really cool things to consider. and. This property is in Lawrence, Kansas, a great college community. The University of Kansas here, it's been rented solidly for the last three years. So if you know anyone looking to buy, this, this would be a great property for them. Make um, Comment below and I'll be happy to give you some more information and some links to this listing. My phone is blowing up this morning. It's kind of crazy. Anyways, I hope this was educational and a little bit of information for you guys because I really want this channel to give you some more insight on owning real estate, what a realtor does, the value of home ownership, and just answer any of your questions you may have. So I'm excited about presenting this information to you and I'll continue to do these videos and hope you enjoy. Thanks so much for taking time to check it out.